Hey everybody, welcome to our Coping with Holiday Stress Google Hangout. Hi Hello. Athena. <laughs> Hi beautiful. How's everybody doing? We're so excited that you've chosen to spend some time with us and um, this topic is a big one for a lot of people. The holiday stress that, um, the stress that goes along with Christmas, other winter holidays and family gatherings right. and dinners and just get-togethers and whether it's shopping or crowds, uh, there's a lot of different uh, stress that goes along with that and we are so excited to just give you some really neat practical tips and tricks on how to cope with that this year. Absolutely. You know, the holidays are stressful enough as they are. I think I don't think there's a person on this earth that doesn't feel some stress around the holidays. Now, it might be good stress, you know, getting together with your family, doing your shopping, making sure your children all get their picture on Santa Claus is the all good stress, but stress nonetheless. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know, I have people come in as clients and say, um, you know, my daughter's getting married, but that's the only stress I can, that's the only thing I could think of in my life, but that's not stressful. And I have to say, it's stressful. It's good stress, but it's still stressful. And the body handles yeah. stress the same, whether it's you know good or bad, um, depending upon the emotional energy that goes with it. So we just want to acknowledge yeah. that everybody has some holiday stress. But what we're concerned about are you, our survivors, and the particular kinds of stress that the holiday season brings with it because it can bring some special issues up to the forefront and we want to arm you and equip you for dealing with them. Yes. Um, I think I would be willing to mention just the whole, um, I know we're going to get into content here in just a moment, but you know, the, the way that the body processes adrenaline and excitement is the exact same way it processes fear. Your brain can't tell the difference between the chemicals that go in for fear and the chemicals that go in for excitement. It's actually the same exact chemical. And yeah. so when we know that ahead of time, we can sort of set ourselves up for success and deal with any fears right. or excitement that produce that chemical. Um, again, good or bad, excitement, fear, whatever, it's the same chemical. It affects the brain the same way. And we're just excited to uh, to equip you with yes. some tools that you might need that will be helpful for you. Hey, Bobby, I just wanted to say. Um, yeah, do really we have any quick. announcements first? Yeah, I wanted to give a little shout out to our UK peeps. Yes. Two in the morning, and you guys are amazing. Welcome, welcome from the UK. And uh, also, if you are listening in on iTunes or Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, um, any of those uh, platforms that are audio only, you can catch this replay on our YouTube channel. And starting in January, you'll be able to find us on Roku devices as Yay. well. So, Yay! And you'll be able to find us under Trauma Recovery University. As you know, we've been sort of dropping little hints here and there. We're going to be doing a little facelift. NoMoreShameProject.com is still going to exist. And you will still get complimentary resources. You'll still be able to find Bobby and myself. Uh, however, Trauma Recovery University is going to be a place where helping professionals and you, the listener or viewer, can go to get... Uh, downloadable resources at low cost, no cost, um, and some that are premium resources as well. Everything from complimentary uh, classes and resources as low as $7 all the way up to $7,000. So um, that's as far as I know, Bobby. I don't know of any other um, announcements other than our two live events, Atlanta, Georgia at the beginning of June right. and in the Pacific Northwest at the end of June. And we will be giving you more information on how to connect with Bobby and myself live in person so that we can provide support for you. Uh, we'll mention more of that later on in the broadcast. Yes. The only thing I can think of is a reminder that we are moving our Google Hangouts, our live broadcasts, from Wednesday night to Monday night. And the first night that we will be on Monday is December 29th. So we want to yes. make sure and remind you of that change. 
Um, uh -huh. And the reason that we did this is to streamline our week a little bit more. Athena and I are going to be going out, doing a little more public speaking, um, attending a few more events, and so we want to front load our beginning of the week so we have the end of the week to uh, do some travel and to focus some more on our writing and um, be able to provide you with more bigger and better things uh, as we get our feet more on the air. Athena and I will also both have new podcasts starting in January so watch for those, watch for more information, subscribe and like um, so we can share our uh, information with more people. The more subscribes and likes we have, the farther up we'll climb in the search engines. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. You know, this is really exciting. Um, this time that we are in right now, I know that we have been sort of telling you guys about um, all of these exciting things that are coming up. But you know, here Bobby and I are. We're both in recovery. We're both survivors of years of ongoing sexual abuse, and. We are showing up every week, even when we have a rough day or a rough week, and we're spending time with you because you guys are the reason why we do this. You are the reason why we're here, and we just love each and every one of you. Connecting with you guys one-on-one -on -one really is just the lifeblood of everything that we do. And um, as Bobby was mentioning, we are front-loading our week. Mondays and Tuesdays are going to be our live Twitter chats. We have a UK Twitter chat that we do Mondays, and we have one in the United States on Tuesdays. Our Google Hangouts on air, like Bobby was saying, will be live on Mondays. And then, of course, you can catch the replays. We are going to be having some webinars and some coaching modules and some ways that you can connect with us live um, as clients if you choose to come on as clients of ours. And those are going to be later on in the week, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then, um, like Bobby was saying, I'm going to be traveling a lot more um, to the mainland starting in January, meeting up with you guys face-to-face -face and planning our live events at the beginning of June and the end of June. So um, we're so excited. We don't want you to feel like we're ripping the carpet out from underneath you, and we don't want you to feel like we have it all together, and we don't um, want you to... Um, feel as though we are caring any less because we are um, switching things up on you um, just a bit so that we can coordinate our schedules to to fit our, our professional lives as well as our personal lives and many of you are part of our professional and personal lives so we love you we care about you you guys are totally the reason we're doing this and I just wanted to just authentically and transparently throw that out there just face to face so that you can really um, receive that you're important to us and you're the whole reason why we're even here right now. So, um, Bobby, what did I forget? Did I forget anything or should we just dive on into content? Let's let's dive on into the content. And I just want to make one more note that um, I want to make sure that everyone knows these next couple of Google Hangouts are going to be very special. Um, for the first time since we started a Google Hangouts, we will not be having um, an educational topic. Instead, Athena and I um, are we're going to talk to you a little bit more about our personal stories. We're going to tell you where we've been, what we've been through, um, and how we think we got from the horror that our life once was to where we are now. Uh, not that we have all the answers, not that we've done everything right. In fact, I've done a lot that has not been right. Um, but I want you to know what didn't work for me and what did work for me so that you, in your recovery, can do all the right things and none of the wrong things. So these next two weeks, I really want to encourage you to be here, to share with us live, because the live kind of has a magic to it that watching it on tape doesn't. Um, but we haven't yet talked about this specifically between the two of us, specifically what topics we're going to share about. But uh, it's, it's going to be magical. And so I really would encourage you to show up the next couple of weeks and share with us um, as we uh, are more vulnerable, more transparent, and more authentic than we usually are and share with you some of the personal journeys that we've been on. I think it's um, worth mentioning also, Bobby, that as we dive into the next following two weeks where we are sharing our stories with you transparently, um, 
it's going to be preparing you, as Bobby was mentioning earlier, really briefly, that you know we're both launching brand new podcasts. I've had a podcast previously called 15 Minute Radio where I did interviews with entrepreneurs, freedom fighters, authors, um, people just like you who are out there changing the world. But this is the podcast that I am starting. It's called Your High Potential and it's all about reaching out to people just like you who have gone through things that no one should ever have to live through and then navigating our way through life and truly reaching our highest potential and not staying stuck. And Bobby is authentically um, just going to you know, tear away all the stigma and the masks and everything and she's going to talk to you real authentically about what it's like to be an entrepreneur and a therapist and a trauma recovery coach and an author on both sides of the desk, not only as a client seeking mental health um, help, but also as being a mental health professional. And then we also um, are going to be mentioning a lot more in those podcasts about our live events that are going to be annual events. We are um, just throwing it out there now that at the beginning of June every year we'll be all um, meeting up in Atlanta, Georgia and at the end of June every year we're going to be in the Pacific Northwest at a retreat center where we can all join together there as well. So um, more details and names and links and stuff um, coming up uh, but just so you guys know, like the next two weeks of the, the episodes that you'll be watching on YouTube or live on Google Plus or on Roku or whether you're listening to this later on, um, those are going to be real, um, like I was saying, Bobby, sort of naked. Like yeah. sort of take away all the things that, all the masks we wear and the ways we cover up and sort of try to fit in with the world and... Um, really just so you guys can get to know us a little bit better because we've been, you know, talking with you and teaching these classes now for, for quite some time, for several months. So I look forward to that. You know, I Bobby, I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous at first, but I'm really excited now. Are you excited? I am. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I, I, I just, um, I don't know. There's been just so much transformation in my own life and in my own recovery since we've started doing this, and I want to, I want to share with people what, what hasn't worked and what does work. Um, that wasn't something that I got during my recovery. And so I want to make sure that you all have that. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the holidays. Um, now, holidays meaning... Um, like holiday, holidays. like going on holiday. <laughs> That's just so funny. And she's, she's, she's got an excellent point there because we had this chat, our UK chat on Mondays. <laughs> And the title of it was the same thing, Coping with the Holidays. And Athena puts it much more, it's much more funny the way she puts it, so I'm going to have her describe it. It was a riot. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're there and we are um, facilitating this Twitter chat with all of our amazing survivors in the UK. And we're talking a little bit about what it's like in the, in the US, you know, just our own personal experiences showing up at a holiday where... Um, our survivor, you know, our survivorness is is very like on high alert. You know, we have Uncle Fred who molested us when we were seven across the table asking me to pass the gravy with the Christmas tree in the corner, and it's just a little awkward and frustrating. And um, I don't necessarily want to sit next to Uncle Fred or pass in the gravy or anything. And we have all these amazing people in the UK. Um, tweeting out how they've never been on holiday before because they come from a poor family. And it's like holiday in the UK means that you've like planned this entire vacation. They're, it's a vacation. They're, on, they're on holiday. They're on holiday. So I had to sort of reword everything like, you know, a family gathering. They call it bonfire night. Um, Hallows Eve and all kinds of other names, you know. Uh, and I, I just I reworded everything for them, and it was it was neat to engage with them. And um, before I forget, Bobby, I always um, mention this every time we have a Google Hangout, and I don't want to forget to mention this now for you YouTube watchers or Roku uh, viewers, and also for you iTunes, Stitcher, and and podcast listeners. 
as our thank you for being one of our loyal subscribers or listeners or viewers or just awesome survivors, uh, we have a gift for you, and that is a complimentary PDF download that matches the topic that we talk about each night. So to pick up your free copy of Coping with the Holidays one page, it's a one page downloadable resource, you're going to go to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com and you're going to click on the tab that says downloadables. And as soon as you click on that tab, you're going to have immediate access to not only today's uh, complimentary downloadable resource, but to our entire library of resources that we have written, designed, and copyrighted, and just spent hours pouring over, and they're just for you. So thank you for being one of our loyal listeners, or viewers, or subscribers, or survivors. So um, please, uh, whenever you pull your car over, if you're driving, listening to a podcast, or what have you, go to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com and click on the tab that says downloadables to pick up your complimentary downloadable PDF resource. And with that being said, take it away, Bobby. Let's dive yes. into content. So let's look at the downloadable that we have for this week. Coping with the holidays. No notification. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to learn how to speak UK. I am, I am. So, <clears throat> like I said, the winter holidays can be hard for anybody. Expe expectations are so high. Um, by golly, you're going to be happy. You're going to love that ugly sweater that your Aunt Marion knitted for you with her own two hands. You are going to bake perfect cookies to take to the perfect party where you will socialize perfectly, you will not drink too much, you will wear the perfect outfit, and the expectations are just enormous. And then you take the busyness of the schedule, right? Um, your child has a band Christmas concert, a choir Christmas concert, oh, and then there's the Christmas play, and then, you know, Church has extra activities, and there's the work party. Um, my sister, believe it or not, their work party, she's in Sacramento, their work party is in San Francisco. So not only do they have to get in their car and drive to San Francisco to go to the party, but then, of course, they have to do the whole hotel room and then come around and drive back the next day. Um, so much to pack into your schedule, and then you've got crowds. And I don't know about any of you, but I get a little bit of anxiety when I'm dealing with a crowded situation. And going anywhere near the malls during Christmas season just is enough to ratchet my anxiety up a few different levels. So there is plenty out there to be stressed about, even if you don't count the fact that we're survivors. But yeah. then when you throw in the other stuff, it gets even harder. Yeah. Um, it's layers, you know. For us as survivors, it's layers and layers and layers of things. And I think we've talked about that before, that um, being a survivor, it's not just a single sheet of information. It's layers. And that's what Yeah, we talked about that being like the, yeah. like the onion, Bobby. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like there's the first layer is like you don't want to pass the gravy to Uncle Fred. Yeah. And then the second layer is that you're being expected to pass the gravy to Uncle Th Uncle Fred. And then the third layer is that you want to set a good example for your children so that they're respectful of their elders. And then you're also dealing with grandma who needs to use a walker because she's not ambulatory anymore. And then grandpa has to help her and his back's going out. And then the turkey's burning, and then Uncle yeah. Joey is drunk in the other room watching football, screaming, and then he starts screaming and cussing, and then your four-year-old starts cussing. And so, anyway, it just one thing leads to 100,000 others, and we just uh -huh. want to tell you guys, you're not alone. No. There's layers. You are not alone. You're never, ever, ever alone. I promise you that if you are dealing with something, if Athena or I haven't dealt with it, we know a survivor who has. So please we'll don't ever feel, with them. and we will, so <laughs> please don't ever feel isolated or alone. Never, never, never. So 
these are some reasons why um, survivors can have a challenging holiday situation. And I'm going to switch back so we can talk to you on this one. Yeah. Um, while you're switching back, I wanted to uh, mention, like down in our second paragraph of our one page, if you've gone to uh, traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com and clicked on the downloadable tab, down in the little secondary paragraph there on the um, holidays one page, we I did want to mention in the beginning of the second paragraph before we go into all of the dysfunction, we do understand that there are families out there that are loving and they're kind yeah. and they like each other and the turkey never burns and Uncle Joey's never drunk and Uncle Fred didn't molest anybody when they were seven. And we get that there are those families out there and that you know, like, I married my incredibly amazing, wonderful husband, and he comes from a family, bless their hearts, they all like each other. They all have great jobs, they all are respectful and kind, and they don't curse, and they send each other birthday cards and Christmas cards, and they text each other and call each other on the phone and hang out, and they belong to one another's Instagram accounts, and... Um, they meet up at the park on Wednesdays, and their kids grew up together, and and they play bunko on the weekends and they're super nice and that's just the way life is and they go to youth group together their kids all go to youth group together they all serve in ministry together at church and they vacation together um, you know down in Mexico they, they do summers together up in New York or whatever we realize that that is possible and that's an awesome blessing however for the other side of the coin for people that grew up with um, abuse and violence and police activity and cursing and incest and molestation and um, just vulgarity and and real dysfunction and just people being super disrespectful and mean and unkind and and cursing and there's bullying and there's hitting and um, you know there's some real realities out there that a lot of people don't really know about but if you're one of those people it, there's a chance that you may have also survived sexual abuse as a child, and that is who we're talking to on this podcast. So uh, we aren't discounting the fact that there are healthy families out there and that that is possible because I've seen it with my own two eyes. I can say that I've witnessed it with my own two eyes as an adult in my husband's family, but I do also want to recognize that that is not the norm. They are the exception, not the rule. You know, and the, there are other ways that families can be dysfunctional. We want to make sure and, and cover some of these different scenarios that cause stress for survivors. So maybe um, your abuser was your soccer coach. So they weren't actually a family member, but perhaps your family just doesn't want to talk about it. And they don't want you to bring it up, and they certainly don't want you to demonstrate any after effects of the molestation. So let's go to Christmas, slap a smile on your face, behave yourself, don't bring it up, and everything will be fine. And so the ex expectations that we will, you know, be cheerful when we don't feel cheerful, we won't bring up things that hurt us, um, we certainly will not uh, rock the boat in any way. That's a whole different kind of dysfunction and that is hard too. So we want to yeah. acknowledge that. That's hard. Um, some of us have been ostracized by our families and so we aren't invited to the family gatherings. Um, I know that when I first, um, when my abuse became known within my family, um, I was thrown out and my abuser was roundly accepted and it was so hard those first couple of holidays to know that my abuser was sitting at the Thanksgiving table being you know past wonderful foods and involved in this conversation and I was sitting alone in my apartment in Oregon um, feeling lonesome and missing uh, the family gathering and it was hard. That was really hard. Um, now yeah. I don't spend a lot of time with my family by choice. But it wasn't by choice initially. Um, now I do it just because they're not healthy. But um, 
wow, there's all sorts of minefields out there in different situations that survivors can encounter. And we want to try and acknowledge them all. I think, are there other ways that you could think of that might cause a stressful situation for a survivor during the holiday season that I um, haven't talked about, we haven't talked about yet? I'm trying to think of, um, I honestly think, I know this sounds like something that's very manini or no big deal, but I do think it's worth mentioning that there are certain unspoken expectations in certain family circles that surround the topic of Christmas cards. Like, do you send the obligatory Christmas card? Do you send the, the Christmas card with the pictures of everyone? What if you don't want your uncle who molested you when you were five to have pictures of your children? You know, I just feel like there's some expectations that are out there during the Christmas Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, winter type holiday season that surround um, living up to obligations yes. that are very tangible such yes. as holiday cards being mailed in the mail or even sending out email or how come you don't call on Christmas anymore and, and you know Uncle Johnny wanted to talk with you and, and you know Uncle Johnny might not be mentally stable and he triggers you and, and it affects you in some way or you know and yeah. I really do think, in addition to that, Bobby, like what we were talking about before, mm -hmm. it is, we want you to know that you don't need to find some magic excuse to not live up to someone's expectations. No. If you are feeling unsafe or like you're, someone's crossing a boundary of yours that you've set for yourself, such as levels of communication or whatever, it's easy to sort of guilt yourself during the holidays more so than other times of year because you're thinking, oh my goodness, it's the holidays. I only have one set of parents. Everyone tells me I should just be grateful that my parents are still alive because their parents aren't still alive. So I should just feel grateful and maybe I should send that Christmas card and maybe I should make that phone call. And Bobby and I are always here to advocate for you and tell you, if you have an internal yes, like yes, I want to do that, or, and you have an external yes, then that's a healthy boundary. If deep down inside you really don't feel comfortable doing it, please just um, give yourself a little bit of time and space and make a healthy choice for you in your recovery. And it goes the other way. If you decide, you know what, I've been having healthy boundaries for 10 years and I haven't been in touch with my family because my I was ostracized when my abuse became public, and you feel like sending that Christmas card just because... Maybe you just got diagnosed with cancer and you don't want any regrets. You know, it goes both ways. If you want to send that card, you send that card. If you want to make that call, make that call. Your recovery is your own, and we want to support you in whatever decision you make, as long as you're making that decision um, in a healthy manner that right. is healthy for you. Yes, yes. Yeah. So and different circumstances, it is. Different circumstances, different choices. There is no one-size-fits-all. And we yeah. will never tell you that we have all the answers. And if you do A, B, C, and D, you will be poof, magically healed. Um, only you. Yeah, it doesn't really happen that way. No, if it did, <laughs> I tell you, I'd walk around with a you know a magic wand and fairy dust every place I went. Um, but yeah. unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, so uh, lots of different ways that survivors can encounter stress. Um, I like what you brought up about the Christmas cards because. For many of us, um, when we're stressed, I know that this is the case for me, when I'm stressed, my mood drops. And when my mood drops, my energy level drops. So even though I might want to send the Christmas cards out, I don't have the energy. I just don't. And I can't muster it up. I can't fake it up. There's nothing I can do. And so when I show up at Christmas and my grandmother says, I didn't get my card from you. Uh, it's really hard to tell her the truth, which was, you know, Grandma, I'm so depressed right now that I barely get out of bed. Uh, I didn't have the energy to send a card. Um, you know, instead it's, you know, I usually end up with kind of, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Um, so, yeah, just those, sometimes even the expectations about the littlest things can cause mm -hmm. us, uh, to, it triggers that guilt and that blame. It does. And, di you know, different different families have uh, different, uh, like, for instance, Bobby, I know I've shared with this with you before um, off the air, but um, 
in my family growing up, certain members of my family made sure that they talked bad about me behind my back if I didn't send a thank you card for something. Really? And, yes, you're and right. I, I remember that. Yeah, and I was never really taught by anyone in my family that I was supposed to send a, a thank you card, right. but they sent a thank you card, so I was supposed to take the hint that that was what was really supposed to be um, that was a, a best practice that I should be adopting for myself. Yes. But I would like to mention for people to keep in mind that the silent message that was being sent to me by other family members was that it was okay um, to rape other people and beat them and yeah. uh, and throw things across the room and curse and do drugs. And so it was very difficult for me as a young person to go, okay, when they when they are sexually abusive or vulgar or violent or they throw things, I'm not supposed to adopt that as a best practice because that doesn't feel right. But when someone sends me a thank you card, I'm supposed to automatically adopt that as a best practice because that's what they did. That was the example they set for me. But wait, is this the example? But wait, that's the example. And then it's just so many different things going on. And, you know, I don't think I've ever really cut myself very much slack when it comes to the thank you card department. I really am a grateful person. It's one of the things that I just intrinsically am. I'm very, very grateful and I'm very verbally, um, I, I verbalize my gratitude on a regular basis for people. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Bobby. I will see and I just said thank you, Bobby. So, but, <laughs> you but are. When I yeah. was young, <laughs> but when I was young, for instance, I didn't know that that was something that you were good if you did send the thank you card and you were bad if you didn't. And it just went into that big pot of stew that was being stirred of all the other abuse and exploitation that I experienced and violence and drugs and alcohol and pornography. And I didn't always pick the spoon up and go, oh, the thank you card, that's the good piece. Like, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? I don't think I ever cut myself some slack. So, total segue off of, like, Christmas cards, but it just, I didn't want to forget to talk about how I was guilted and um, talked about, about and whispered about by my family members if I didn't send the obligatory thank you card, as though I were not grateful because I didn't send a card. Right. But you, what you've made is an absolutely excellent point about how those of us who were raised where as children when there was consistent abuse and dysfunction in the family we didn't get the standard uh, life skills training that other people did um, yeah. nobody sat down and said this is the situation where you send a thank you card this is what a thank you card looks like these are the kinds of things that you say no one sat down and said okay um, the proper clothing for a um, you know, your seventh grade, first seventh grade dance is this. Uh, this is how you shake someone's hand. This is how you introduce. We didn't get any of those things. So everything in that way that we've had to learn, we taught ourselves. Or we've had yeah. to learn by trial and error. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, cut yourself some serious slack. And I'm not saying that just to you. I'm saying that to all of us. You know, give yourself some grace. You have raised and parented yourself. So, um, huge kudos to you for doing that, um, and big bravo. Yay! And I, yay! <laughs> Absolutely. I also, I don't think that we mentioned it specifically on our list of our <laughs> one page for our right. surviving the holidays and coping, but I want to mention, um, in addition to the list that we're about ready to go over right now, right. I want to add that perhaps it would be a good idea for you to record yourself or write down a list of awesome things that you've taught yourself that you didn't learn when you were little or awesome ways that you've overcome some challenges that you were sort of set up to fail but you overcame them anyway and yes. really affirm yourself whether you're looking in the mirror or you record it and you listen to it over and over you write yourself notes and you put them up on your computer or on your bathroom mirror or um, one of my girlfriends used to take uh, those dry erase markers and she used to write on her shower wall um, really? different affirmations. Yeah, my girlfriend Barbara, it was brilliant and, and yeah. So um, anyway, I know that we didn't mention it or type it out for you on this one page, but maybe just as a bonus pro tip, let's, let's make a list of some good wins that we've had over the year and yeah. um, take that with us as we drive to our family's house on holiday um, or this holiday season or when we make those phone calls or when we have those Skype or FaceTime sessions right. or 
um, where as we're sitting home alone in our apartments, you know, kind of not around other family members. Like, right. just really try to build yourself up is what I'm getting at. So yes. I know we're going to dive right into the rest of our yes. one-page body. but, you know, that would be an excellent thing to um, go with the imposter syndrome that we talked about last week. An excellent way to build up your good pile and um, remind yourself that you are worthy. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So here we are. To cope with holiday stress and emotional pain, use these strategies. Ah, here we go. Practice healthy boundaries. Uh, we talked about this, I'm, I'm guessing, maybe about four or five weeks ago. So there is a healthy boundaries one page up on the nomarshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com downloadables tab. You will find a healthy boundaries one page. It has lots of information on how to set healthy boundaries, what kind of boundaries, what would apply when, um, and how to put those things into place. So this is an excellent time to go back, either pull it up for the first time or review it for a second time. So you can have healthy boundaries when you um, are dealing with the holiday events, parties, family yes. interactions. And keep in mind, beautifuls, we always tell you that without healthy boundaries, it is impossible to have a successful recovery. Healthy boundaries are an absolute must, must, must if you are going to recover from abuse. So yeah. um, that's a that's a one page that you could print out and paste it on your forehead. I'm joking, oh, of course. No, no. Point. I wrapped it around my arm and duct taped it. Um, yep, that's what I needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> so number two is limit your contact with toxic family members. Okay, now we realize easier said than done sometimes, but we did the family relationships. Um, that one was a little farther back. I'm going to say that one was six or seven weeks ago. Again, I'm going to say it might have been like week two, week two okay. or week three. So, that was a long time yeah, ago. long time ago. So go on to the um, nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com website. Click on the downloadables tab, and you'll find the family relationships one page. Just print those both out. Holiday, healthy boundaries, family relationships. Holiday stress, all three, print them all out, staple them together, and that is your toolkit for surviving the holiday season with as little emotional pain and negative stress as possible. Um, okay, here we go. We're going to give you permission to do something else. Skip family events if attending them would cause you emotional harm. If you decide to go, take a safe support person and limit the amount of time that you'll be there. Okay, so we understand sometimes it is much easier said than done to tell Aunt Harriet that you're not coming over to do Christmas caroling with her like you do every year because Uncle you know, John was incredibly inappropriate with you when you were a child. It's hard. The family expectations are that you will be there, you will be happy, you will be prompt, you will bring gifts for everyone, and you will have uh, copious amounts of perfectly baked Christmas treats to hand out. Um, it's hard, we know. But give yourself as much permission as you can to limit those kinds of activities in any way that you can. Because that toxicity is... its there's no other way to say it. It's toxic. It's poison. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's damaging to your recovery. So we want to give is. you permission um, to extricate yourself from those as much as possible. Okay. Now this is just one of my favorites. Um, shift your focus during the holidays to something that is not affected by bad, bad memories or experiences. And something that is new okay not something that's tainted by chaos or dysfunction from your childhood maybe what you want to do is instead of celebrating with your family of origin meaning the family you were born into now instead you're going to celebrate the holidays with your friends who have become like family and so we coined the word family that's what we call them our family um, or instead focus on volunteering um, go to serve holiday dinner at a local shelter, a volunteer with Toys for Tots. Um, I know there are actually some agencies out there where you can sponsor a family 
and they'll give you a list of what the family needs for both a holiday meal and for gifts and you can go out and get them and then they let you go with them to deliver them and that is just absolutely magical um, I can't recommend doing something like that uh, highly enough because it not only gets us out of uh, what our typical routine was that had the bad memories attached to it, but it lets us give to people. And that is always rewarding. That's always a good thing. Um, try new Christmas traditions. So, you know, do some research online. Do you want to try something that they tried uh, that they do in Sweden? Do you want to try a tradition from Mexico? What can you do that is new and different, that is completely unattached to the dysfunctional family and the bad memories? And so I just, I love this. I love creating new traditions, trying new things, and getting away from the stuff that's old and hurtful. What do you think, Athena? Hey, I was going to say, hey, Bobby. <laughs> um, so on the topic of family, so for Thanksgiving every single year, my husband and I, we go to my girlfriend Kathy's house and um, her husband Torin. They open up their home and with uh, Kathy's brother, um, Sean, and there are some other uh, different families that also attend every year and then there's always new people and so Kathy is my family and yes. I go there on Thanksgiving every year and I really just have to say that um, I look forward to it every year it is something yeah. that is just so special and near and dear to my heart and every Thanksgiving my husband and I also volunteer at our our fellowship and we serve um, several hundred meals to the local community just as a complimentary Thanksgiving meal and we participate in that every year. Now, I realize that's Thanksgiving and we're coming up on Christmas but we do similar things here where we live uh, around the Christmas time holidays because um, our families are not on the island we live on and so I think my for myself living on this little island in the middle of the ocean we're very remotely located and um, we're farther away from any landmass than anywhere else in the entire planet, um, the Hawaiian Islands. So I think I have sort of like a head start. I feel like I'm ahead of the game for one of the first times ever in my life when it comes to this whole topic we're talking about of choosing to spend time with people that you really enjoy being around and not feeling obligated to go places that trigger you or make you feel unwelcome or unwanted or disliked or ignored or invisible or all, just a host of many other things that you could feel if you were to go spend time with family members that you really just um, don't have healthy relationships with. That toxicity that Bobby was talking about is like cancer. When you yeah. hang out with family members that treat you poorly, you set yourself up for feeling sick and horrible and awful for a very, 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 very long time. So we want to encourage you to make healthy choices and hang out with people that you really, really like. And you could have Christmas in June with Bobby and I um, in Atlanta at the beginning of June and on and on the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest at the end of June. If you really just want to hold off, we can exchange Christmas cards or Christmas gifts. Then. That's so right. There's a little, there's a little uh, option for you. <laughs> um. Uh, Jack just tweeted us and he said kudos for mentoring Toys for Tots. I remember volunteering years ago with my grandfather um, who was a Marine and it was a great experience. So yes, love it, make new memories. And you know, I'm going to say something here that I forgot to put on it and I should have. For many of us as survivors, um, our faith or our religion was not healthy when we were growing up. It was used against us. We've talked about uh, survivors in faith before. But that can taint um, our holiday experience when many people are so focused on um, religion and we don't want to have anything to do with it because we haven't been able to heal uh, that part um, of our experience yet. Or we have just um, decided that faith is not going to be a part of our life. So give yourself permission that if that's not a part of your life or it's not a healthy part of your life right now, that that's okay. 
you are where you are right now. Um, if you don't feel like going to midnight mass for the first time in 30 years and slapping a smile on your face and pretending that you are okay with everything, then don't go. Um, stay home. Um, do some meditation. Uh, you know, say a prayer at home. Whatever you need to do to take care of yourself is absolutely what we're advocating for. So uh, I want to acknowledge that for, for some people, that religion component for the holidays is a tricky minefield. And we want to give you permission to sidestep those minds. Sidestep all the minds. Um, <laughs> here's the next one. Make a commitment to yourself not to stuff painful and difficult feelings this holiday season. Practice safe, constructive ways to express them, such as writing or art therapy. So when um, you feel that pressure to slap a smile on your face and pretend that everything is okay and cheerful, when in fact your mind is being flooded with memories of abuse because you've been triggered at a family event, say your excuses. Go home. Write, write in your journal. If you need, if you're triggered, you need to call your therapist. Call your therapist. Call the hotline. Get online and chat with someone on Brain.org. But experience those feelings in as safe as way as you can, instead of this year stuffing them or guilting yeah. yourself because you feel them. Yeah, the the holidays are a time of year when people. Uh, tend to stuff a lot of feelings and end up. Um, I I read something. I think it was about two years ago, back in 2012. I think um, the amount of um, illnesses or heart attacks or strokes or what have you are actually um, increased in the month really? of December and January because of the holiday stress. So yeah. anyway, I know that that sounds like we're like being doomsayers or whatever, but we're just being real with you, and that is just letting you know that when you stuff your feelings, of whether it's painful feelings, painful memories, frustration, and you keep it all in so that you can keep that perfect um, exterior, that little glossy finish going on on the outside so you don't ruffle any feathers or upset the apple cart, you're actually causing yourself a real disservice. So um, just make sure that you, like we talked about in one of our previous broadcasts, make sure you enlist a safe person yeah. and have that person, whether it's someone that's in a, in a group with you on Facebook or someone that you keep in touch with on email or I know that I still have friends that have pen pals and they actually write real letters back and forth to one another. Get those feelings out whether it's journaling, writing someone a letter, calling them on the phone, texting someone, um, whatever you need to do. Just get your um, stuff out there so that you don't stuff it and make yourself sick. Yes. And you know, Athena and I are not modify, modifying our Twitter chat schedule or a Google Hangout schedule at all for the holidays. We'll be here still. Um, every regularly scheduled Twitter chat, every regularly scheduled Google Hangout, we will be here. So if you need extra support, if you need extra encouragement during the holidays, um, I encourage you to come to one of our Twitter chats. Um, chime in. Um, you know, if you just need some extra support, say, you know what, I don't even know what the topic is tonight, but I'm here because I need some extra support. I promise you, people will give you the extra support and they'll love on you like crazy. Um, they yeah. always do. They always do. And, uh, Bobby, we have a lot of people that are crossing over from domestic violence chat as well. Yes. And um, I know that a lot of our domestic violence survivors are also adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse and then as they were adults they were desensitized to those spidey senses that we call them um, with discernment and just sort of repeated those unhealthy um, those unhealthy um, relationship um, patterns and yeah. so if you are tuning in or listening and you're brand new and you don't even know what sex abuse chat is, you want to join or you want to be in a, a, a private secret Facebook group with us or you're from another chat like domestic violence chat or you found us just by, uh, I was looking at our analytics the other day as I was in the back end of our sites and our YouTube channel and everything and 
And it looks like you guys are finding us organically on YouTube by searching for a hashtag. And if that's the case and you're not even from our Twitter family or our Facebook family or Roku or iTunes or Stitcher or whatever, we're just so excited you're here. And I know that um, this topic is a little different than the other teaching topics that we have because we have a lot of side chatter going on because the holidays are coming. But we just want to make sure that you know that you're welcome here anytime and you can watch as many episodes as you want as, as, as often as you want and reach out to us personally because we're real people and we're in recovery and we just we love doing what we do we love doing yeah. exactly this yes and we get we get it um, like I said we said earlier yeah. if, if it isn't something Athena's gone through or I have gone through I'll tell you we promise we'll find you someone's gone through it um, you know 50 shades of gray and all sorts of black and white so the last tip on the sheet, and I'm not going to switch back because um, I want to stay here with you for the rest of it, is to make sure and build in generous amounts of self-care time into the holidays. Get that yes. calendar out and block off blocks of time. You know, I'm sorry, John, that your Christmas party is Thursday night. I already have another commitment. And my other commitment is to my bathtub, some candles, a glass of wine, and a bubble bath. And that's fine. That's great. That's healthy, healthy, safe care. Yes, it's exactly. So block them out. Block out your self-care times. Uh, maybe it's sitting down with your children and your husband, a bowl of popcorn and watching It's a Wonderful Life. Whatever it is that you do or that you do with your healthy, safe people um, during the holidays that nurtures you and you know lifts you up, Please schedule all those things in there, um, and then the stuff that's hard, or um, maybe it's just stressful because you have some social anxiety. That stuff's got to fit in around it. You first, for the first time in your life, maybe you first. Yeah, because you deserve it. That's why. Oh. I know that. Uh, I know that. Uh, I have some family members. Um, we have some new people that are tweeting us right now. I have some new entrepreneur friends that um, that have products on Shark Tank, and uh, they're they've been tweeting back and forth and and saying hi. And so I just want to give a little shout out to Trey and to Chris, our our young entrepreneurs over in Ohio. Um, I invited them to actually come to our live event in uh, in Atlanta, actually, and um, hoping that. Uh, Trey can come down and, and speak. Um, at any rate, I wanted to um, just, as Bobby was talking about, because you deserve it, um, we, we often, if it's not us, it's a family member of ours, we were sort of trained to think that if we weren't doing something at all times that we were lazy. Or as I mentioned in previous broadcasts, the fa we might have to bleep this out, Bobby, but the favorite term around my household when I was growing up, if I wasn't doing something 24-7, I was a lazy ass. So I'm just here to tell you that you matter. You're not a lazy ass, even if you think you are. And you deserve to rest. You deserve yeah. to take a deep breath. You deserve to master the art of pouring yourself um, your favorite cup of tea, glass of wine, um, a cup of coffee, maybe a cup of soup or something. Draw yourself a bath or, or maybe get a little, a little tub and put some water in it. Soak your feet, put your feet up, something. Get a little, um, one of those little massagers that they sell around the holidays. And you do a little massager on your shoulders or your neck. and um, Put some music on. Just, yeah, put some music on, whatever music makes you the happiest. And um, you are an adult now, if you're watching this, likely, and if you're listening in. And the, the pro tip at the bottom of our one page, our supercharge your recovery tip, is, you know, we weren't given choices when we were younger. We had our boundaries violated. If you're on this broadcast, you're an adult survivor of some sort of childhood abuse, sexual abuse, exploitation, or something. Your boundaries were not respected. You weren't able to make your own choices. You weren't able to choose to be healthy and be kind to yourself and to breathe and to rest and to practice good um, social skills or, or practice good hygiene. You weren't, 
you, you were not in an environment that that fostered success and health. And so we really want for you this holiday season, if you take nothing else away from this broadcast, to know that you matter and to supercharge your recovery, we challenge you to make a healthy choice. Just choose to do something different than the way you were raised. Make a healthy choice. Honor yourself because you deserve it. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. <coughs> what did Excuse I forget, me. Bobby? Did I I'm so sorry. Anything? You did not forget anything. I want to slap up our contact information here real quick yeah. before we turn into a pumpkin because pumpkin time is fast approaching. It is. I think we have three minutes left. <laughs> okay. This is our contact information, and I'm going to read it to you because I realize that some of you are listening to us audio only. And so we encourage you to reach out to us. Um, we have private Facebook groups, secret Facebook groups, that we can get you plugged into, get you some extra support and encouragement. Um, we can tell you more about the Twitter chats. We can direct you to resources that are on the website. Um, however we can help you, we encourage you to reach out and let us know. So if you are on Twitter, you can follow me, Bobby Parrish, at Truth Is Hers. Athena at Athena Moberg, Athena and Bobby together at the No More Shame Project, which is N M S P R O J E C T. So the first three letters N M S and then Project. At email, I am available at Bobby L Parish at gmail.com. Athena is Athena at Athena Moberg.com. And then we have a joint Gmail account at No More Shame Project. Um, that might change when we switch over to Trauma Recovery University, but that email account will always be active and it will always be forwarded someplace where we will get yeah. your message. So if you're watching this two years from now and you're thinking, oh gosh, they've changed, I can't reach them, nope, it's still there, we promise you it will always be forwarded to someplace where we will be able to get in touch with you. Yeah. On Facebook, each of us have Facebook pages under our names, Bobby Parrish, Athena Moberg. You're welcome to friend us, follow us, um, introduce yourself, however it is that you'd like to interact with us. And then there is a No More Shame Project uh, Facebook page. So it's the and then hashtag No More Shame and then space project. Websites, uh, nomoreshameproject.com which is quickly transitioning into traumarecoveryuniversity.com, but nomoreshameproject.com will always be functional and it will redirect. Is that right, Athena? That is correct. Yes. No, that is correct. I will always make sure that when you log on to nomoreshameproject.com um, and our little bit.ly link, bit.ly forward slash NMS project, that's where you can watch us live every week or you can watch our replays. Um, those will always be accessible even when we launch our new TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com website. Yeah, we're not going to leave you behind. And then we'll, of course, update the graphic. So of course. And then, <laughs> I have BobbyParish.com and she has AthenaMoberg.com. And just a quick reminder, I'm going to stop screen sharing here, that Yay. starting on the 29th of this month, we will be transitioning over to Monday nights at the same time as now, 6 p.m. Pacific time, um, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And good grief, what is it, 4 for you? 4 o'clock? Uh, yes, um, it's 4 o'clock p.m. Hawaii time until everyone else in the whole wide world springs forward for uh, daylight savings time. And then I am at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's good. <laughs> it is. And then that means my UK chat for all of our UK peeps out there that are going to yes. be on holiday. Um, <laughs> I will be waking up super duper duper early in the morning to spend time with you all because yes. you matter. Yes, you do. You matter. You're important to us. This is why we're yep. here. Um, so again, don't forget the next two weeks of our Google Hangouts. Very special. 
We're going to talk to you about our personal stories, um, things that can give you some inspiration, some guidance, tell you what not to do, and give you some encouragement maybe on what to do. Because we know that something that maybe worked for me might not work for you. Um, but we're just going to tell you, we're going to share, we're going to get real vulnerable, very transparent, um, share with you the hard, uh, nitty-gritty stuff of recovery so that if we can do anything to keep you from going to those places, those nitty-gritty awful places, um, we're going to do it. And we're going to share with yeah. you these next two weeks. So come back, join us, join us live. Um, it's, it's magical in the moment. Uh, but if you can't, then catch the podcast or catch the YouTube video. So I'm so excited. We have so <laughs> many amazing resources launching January 1st for you guys. So um, if you are um, fans and followers of Bobby and myself, we just want you to know that um, we're here for you. We're not going anywhere, even though we're uh, – actually, Bobby, it, it's been really exciting. I've been getting um, some feedback in one of our – our uh, our private secret Facebook groups. I've been getting some feedback from some really awesome um, survivors on how they want the website to look. So I'm letting yes. all of our fans and followers design our website for us. And yes. they've, I mean, it, that's just been invaluable because yeah. I want to make it look the way you guys want me to make it look. So yes. I'm a very new developer, a new new WordPress developer. I'm definitely not like, you know, super. Uh, overly skilled in that area, but it's my pleasure to create a beautiful environment for you guys to hang out in. So, yeah. Bobby, I just love you, and you I guys, you, too, you are the reason. You, you guys are the reason why we're here. You're yep. the reason why we do this every single week, and it may just seem so dorky that we keep telling you we appreciate you, but if you are watching this, you're one of our peeps, and you get it, and you know that we really, really, really appreciate you. So, yes. thank you for tuning in to this yes. broadcast. We'll and, see you next uh, week. Yeah, we're going to see you next week, and I can't wait till we switch over to Mondays, and then we have more time to meet with you guys one-on-one uh, -on -one in coaching and in coaching groups. And, yep. um, you know, Bobby and I have some books that are coming out. We have some trauma some trauma recovery guides that are, that are coming out in 2015. We each have books that are coming out. And then don't forget, No More Shame November is always every single November, and that's when we publish our anthology, and that is a compilation of survivors stories just like you. So if you want to submit for uh, No More Shame November for the anthology that publishes every November then you just need to contact us and let us know and we'll get you a set of guidelines so that you can submit your story. Yes. And with that I will bid you all a very fond aloha and I can't wait to see you on social media or over on my website or in email or wherever. Yes. Bye. Okay everybody. Good night. Or maybe not going to. Bye. <laughs>